from the depth instant tutorial you are watching how to make a diff gun today on instant tutorials this is jimodism by the way we're going to de do the diff guns the diff guns direct input feeding guns and that's what they are we don't have a auto loader we don't have an ammo clip we load the shells directly by teleporting them into these um, input feeders when a diff gun has fired its shots it's basically out of the game however uh, what's good about diff guns is that they are extremely cheap you can see this big auto loaders cost 400 they're also pretty big too the ammo is expensive too like uh, the ammo clips uh, and if we do a diff gun we can get away with a really cheap gun so um, making a cheap gun keep that in mind all the time you need to think about that when we're building the diff gun so we're going to do a diff gun on a turret because that makes the most sense you can very easily make your diff guns uh, deck guns you can also make them um, well a three by three meter well because we can just stick this thing down here if we want to so a diff gun requires uh, not very many components what decides the fire rate of a diff gun well the fire rate gets decided by how fast the barrel can cool down between the shots uh, the fire rate beyond the shots you have you don't need to count that because that's so long that it doesn't really matter the firing piece itself will be able to hold one shot each of these ammo input feeders will be able to hold an additional shot so when making a diff gun you most ideally want to have connections to all the four sides of this firing piece so if we have that that means that this thing can fire five shots behind the cannon we need to have coolers as well as gauge increasers and we need to try and find a way to fit them inside of the space we have set up and that's the only hard part about the tetris because the rest we don't need to bother about since we only use coolers and well gauge increasers so you might wonder uh, won't making a higher gauge uh, make the reload time slower yes of course it will make the reload time slower but because we can only realistically even shoot these five shots for this type of diff gun we want the gauge basically as powerful as possible so that means for the well this cannon that we will have a 500 millimeter cannon the smart thing about diff guns is that we can fire an extremely powerful shell that can even be 10 meters like larger to even fit inside a clip and we can fire that huge shell from this firing piece and we can fire it in like 500 um, a caliber or like 500 millimeters a really strong shell don't forget to EMP insulate your uh, local weapon controller all right so uh, let me tear this away a little bit here uh, you will need uh, it's uh, eight gauge increasers to reach 500 millimeters so I'll make him fit here now you should know that the recoil from this gun will be pretty extreme this will make our accuracy a lot lower so I of course want to make them fire as fast as possible but if I would want them to actually fire more accurately I would need to have recoil absorbers but if we add recoil absorbers we are kind of wasting some uh, diff gun potential because the thing with the diff guns is to be cheap and the recoil absorbers is one of those expensive parts remember that a cannon will not realistically be able to fire again after these five shots during its uh, lifetime in battle all right now we have set up the cooling so many coolers we can fit and all the gauge increasers so that we actually reach 500 millimeters we do need a mantlet to go for elevation uh, there are different types of mantlets and uh, like if you're a little bit smart don't select a too expensive one um, I'd go for an elevation one meter for a turret or possibly two meter elevation but this will be enough for this thing since the diff gun won't be very accurate anyways we don't want to have an extremely long type of uh, barrel it suffices with a barrel that's long enough for the burn time of the uh, uh, gunpowder in the shell to well expand and that we will be able to adapt so 
we're going, we're going to make a shell that will have full length burn at 8 meters. You'll need to make that sure that the barrel has a full length burn, otherwise you will miss a lot of speed and thus damage. Now that we have a diff gun, we need to design the shell. And here we can see we have a shell here. This is the max level, this is the max size shell that exists in the game. This shell is 10 meter long. And you can have a shell that's 10 meter long. But you can see it only goes 322 meters per second, like super slow. So if we make it go faster, like at least 700, um, then we suddenly need to have a 19 meter long barrel. And that's kind of a little issue. While we can have the largest shell that exists in the game and fire them, um, it causes some problem. You can also see here that the barrel cooldown is 7.62 seconds. This time is the uh, time between the shots. So it will be a shot, 7 seconds, a shot, 7 seconds, shot, 7 seconds, pop, 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 like that. And that will be our, well, rate per fire. However, um, then the ammo intakes will, will reload and they take 428 seconds to load. So that's a very long time. Anyways, we can fire this thing. You can see it's a, it's a pure rod. It's pretty slow. We also don't have a good tip, so it's extra slow because it's not aerodynamic. But that's kind of the thing. You might not want to have the longest shell. Uh, possible. So we go in here and uh, we do a new shell. And four kind of shell recommendations for diff guns. Uh, if we're making a 500 millimeter shot, then we probably want to have a chemical shell. A shell that doesn't really care about the speed it's going. It might go slow and it still does the same damage. If we want to have kinetic diff guns, it's wiser to go with a lower caliber in order to actually get a somewhat functional reload speed between the shots. But this type of diff guns or the diff guns that um, in my experience for damage purposes do the most amount, of most amount of damage is to fire a 500 meter chemical shell that's doing a lot of damage and then it doesn't have to reload in a long time. And a lot of other people or using diff guns this way. Very high gauge and chemical shell. So what are we going to put into this thing? Well, one popular thing is to just have a frag shell. Just frag through and through, only frag. We can also do something like a hash shell or a heat shell, or we, we can even have a heat and frag shell combined. I've seen that too. Very different, efficient and good designs. I'm going to try and do a hash frag shell. So we're gonna have a squash head, we're going to have some high explosive, and remember this shell doesn't have to go fast in order to do damage, it only needs to go fast in order to hit the target reliably. Now we can also see here we have barrel length for full propellant burn. Make sure that this barrel length for full propellant burn is uh, like a lower value than the actual length of your barrel. Remember to set the gauge properly up here. And there we have it. We have three frag warhead bodies. We have, um, well, a squash head with three warhead bodies, so a pretty strong shell. And we have a barrel, barrel length for full propellant burn of 7.5. Very nice. And because we have a hash here, I'm going to set the fragmentation cone to something slower, like 20. And that should do some great damage. Now we go to one of these, unassign this, and assign to all intakes. Remember that we can also go in here, access, and create a new shell inside of this cannon, and just uh, without having this thing. If we do that, the shell won't be saved uh, with the sub-object. Then you have to customize and do the shell each time you spawn the cannon and assign it to all intakes. I have recreated the shell in the built-in shells designer just because when we have our shell, it's easier to have it here. So we click assign and assign to all intakes. 
This shell only travels 600 meters per second, but it carries a lot of payload. Especially for coming from such a cheap gun. This gun costs 2000 in material cost. Compare that, for example, with a simple weapon. This one costs 4000. And that's also a good cannon, of course. While the simple weapons are good weapons, um, having two of these, for example, instead will do you more good as auxiliary guns for dealing with heavy targets. So, in conclusion, def guns are great guns to use as auxiliary and secondary and additional weaponry that are more or less disposable. This gun now has a reload time between the shots of 7.6 seconds. And they take a lot of minutes to load. Very nice indeed. So, what remains now is to just add some metal armor on this thing and we can save it as a sub-object. And there we have it, a powerful diff gun ready for saving. If we want to see some damage, we can line it up here and fire around. This is a very powerful five shots for a gun this size. So a diff gun will never be your main gun, but it's a great additional guns and auxiliary guns and cool deck guns. And having loads of them look absolutely awesome. Hope this little video helped you and thanks a lot for watching this instant tutorial. Do subscribe for more instant tutorials and other let's play from the depth videos. This is your host Jimmy Desm, we're signing out.